Guten Tag, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian, for, again from Germany. This is kind of a vloggy sort of thing again, but I'm going to talk about the knives that I brought with me over here and uh, why I chose them, and also a couple I got while I was here. Nothing too exciting on the latter part, I'm sorry. There wasn't really anything super cool that was reasonably priced, so I didn't. I am recording this on my iPhone holding it, so I apologize. If it's a bit shaky, I'm doing my best. I'm in a hotel room in Kalkum, Germany. Hotel Traumblick, highly recommend it, great place. But uh, I'm sitting in a hotel bed with a hotel table and trying to figure this out. Let's first talk about what I brought with me. First of all, my TRM Viator. One of my favorite slip joints. These are all slip joints, uh, mostly because German knife laws are kind of odd. You are allowed to carry things that you can open with one hand or have a locking blade, but not both. Kind of an odd combination of laws there, but so this is definitely two hand open, the TRM Viator. I also did a review on this. I will link down below to it eventually, um, but I have to upload this first and then get on my computer and do that. So uh, there will theoretically be a link down below to my review of this. Uh, but I love this knife, so slicey, so nice. And uh, I've actually had to use this a little bit. So I uh, had to cut open a fair amount of packaging and things like that, nothing hard use or anything like that. And uh, brought a meal back to hotel, didn't realize that I didn't come with silverware and stuff. So I, had, I this was my, Cutting through some schnitzel. But a great slicey knife, love it. Has the micarta scales on it now, which is the way it will be when I carry it. I love it this way. It's so, it's so pretty and it just works. So These are just the perfect uh, combination of grippy, but not too grippy. Love it. Another knife I had to bring along was the Kaiser Zip Slip. Brought this mostly because it was kind of designed for German knife laws. They sell a lot of knives in Germany and the Zip Slip is one hand open but doesn't lock, which is really nice. It's nice to still have a one hand open knife. Pretty cool, been splitting time between the two. Haven't really had a, the days I carried this, just never had an occasion where I had to use it. But uh, I love this thing. And I was at a knife shop and looking at some stuff and he asked what I had in my pocket and I pulled it out and he said, I've been thinking about becoming a Kaiser dealer. I'm going to now. He was really impressed with it. So. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Kaiser. I just signed you a new dealer in Kokum, so uh, yeah, you're welcome. And then just for something a little classier, I brought my Leo. I almost brought my, uh, yep, uh, I almost brought a couple other ones. I almost thought about my proper, thought about my lion steel round head, but I'm in Europe. Bring a European cool pretty knife, right? So I brought my, this is a Leo. I don't know if you guys have seen this one yet. I actually traded for it. It's got the blue micarta. Very nice. It's actually when it gets back, it's going off to Apostle P to get properly sharpened. It has kind of an odd thing on one side. You can see the grind is not even on it. Not terribly uncommon with Leos, unfortunately. I've learned since I got this, but uh, yeah, 20 bucks will fix it. It'll be great. But uh, so this one is not going, not or is, is going off to Apostle P. But this is one that you're not going to see for a little bit until he sends it back to me. But I really do love this knife. It's just so beautiful. And it still cuts fine, it's still very sharp, it's just kind of uneven grind, so. But God, it's gorgeous. And this is just kind of my classy knife I brought over here, so. Just look at that detailing, it's so amazing. And this camera's not doing it justice, I assure you, nor is this lighting, which I probably again, I apologize, I can't do anything about that. But what did I buy? A Couple of cheap knives, nothing too crazy. Uh, first of all, I bought another Leo, kind of. So Leo is not a brand name. A lot of people think that Leo or La Joie, what they call it over here, they pronounce it crazy. Uh, Leo is not a brand name. It, it is just a name of a style of knife. So this is one of the cheaper ones. It is made in China. Forge de Leo that makes this one. That is by far the best company to get them from. Uh, I really like their knives. They're really nice. But they're you're looking, you know, roundabouts, 100 bucks and up. They're, uh, they're pretty pricey. Not really. I mean, they're pretty reasonable for what they are, but they're not cheap. This is one of the cheaper ones, but I was actually, and they don't sell these ones in America too terribly often. So, now oh, see, I did, doing two hand opening knives, I should have had them open, should have planned ahead, used the leg here. This is a Leo Le Eclair, it is made in China. So it's not a clone because this, there's nothing copywritten about the Leo name. There's nothing copywritten about the Leo design. There's nothing patented or anything. So everybody's allowed to make them and lots of companies do. Of the Chinese ones, 
this is the best. And it was 15 euros, which is like 20 bucks. And they had 10 of them, so I got to open the boxes and look and find uh, the one I wanted. And this one is pretty good, I have to say. We'll pull back here a little bit. Yeah, the blade centering is pretty good. It's uh, The action's really smooth. Uh, there's no burrs or anything sticking out like that, you know. There's nothing, no glaring quality things for it. This is the large size Leia, which I kind of wanted one of these. This is the smaller size, obviously. Um, there are some differences, but I have to say the quality in this one feels pretty dang good. I was really impressed by it, and I was like, it's 15 euro, screw it. And it's not a clone, so I didn't feel bad about buying it or anything. Um, pretty neat. I, I do like it, and this is just going to be my large traditional beater knife when I get back. It's just going to be... I like having a big traditional sometimes, but, um, you know, I, it's cooler than a buck 110. It's probably not as not as good, but uh, for the kind of stuff I'll use it for, it'll be fine. And it's just neat, you know. And I got it over here. But the one that I like the most I got is also not expensive. This is a knife that you can occasionally find in America but is uh, currently I couldn't find them for sale anywhere other than buying them from Europe and having them sent. But this is a, again, one hand. This is fun. This is an Antoni Knives Old Bear, which is pretty neat. Very similar to, in a lot of ways, to an open L. But the locking mechanism is different. Instead of having to two-hand lock it and, you know, take your hand off to turn the thing, it's just got this nice little switch. Handle uh, shape is also significantly different than an open L. Blade shape is very similar. They only come in stainless. Uh, they don't come in a, in a carbon steel. 420C, or 420C steel, I think it is, I do believe. Nice brass collar. Uh, really lovely handle. I don't know what kind of wood that is, but it's really nice. Um, very smooth. A little bit more attention paid to ergonomics on, than is on the open L. It's up to you which one you think fits better. But this, I feel like, fits my hand pretty darn good. I will definitely be doing a comparison between this and an open L when I get back. Because I have lots of open Ls. But something that's pretty hard to get in America. And it was cheap. This was 20 euros. 22 euros. Something like that. So uh, I didn't get a bargain but I didn't overpay for it so I'm fine with that uh I do like it a lot it's just neat and it's it's kind of this is kind of my keepsake knife for this trip I also part of the reason also why I bought the Leo because I'm getting into Leos a lot and I wanted just to see what the difference is between a quote-unquote real Leo and a quote-unquote fake Leo even though there are no there is no such thing as a fake Leo you can use that name and however you want it's not copywritten but uh yeah, and I'm I'm impressed with both of them I got, though. I like them both for different reasons. Like, this is just kind of neat. And this one, this one I probably won't use a whole lot, but maybe I will. Who knows? I do use my open L's a little bit, so I'll probably use it. This one I got to compare to this one, and I'm just going to use it as a beater. So I think it was worth worth the 15 euros. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be about it for knife content on this trip, unless I... Managed to find an amazing knife shop in Portugal. I kind of doubt I will. But uh, we were pretty much stationed here in just one town. And uh, they only had the one knife shop. And I looked at a lot of bokers. I was really, I was came here eager to purchase a really nice boker traditional that I couldn't get in America. And he had one that was really cool that that color combination didn't come in America. But it cost even more than it does ordering it just from Blade HQ back in the States. 17.5% VAT kills you, so uh, I'd have to pay the VAT, and it just wound up being not economical to buy it over here. So the the price of the knife was probably cheaper, but once you add, you know, almost 20% in tax, it jacks the price up. So be cheaper just to buy it at home. I did like it a lot, though. It was like a Barlow-style one. I liked it enough that I will buy one probably when I get back, but it, it wasn't uh, economical just to buy it here. I'd save myself like 25 bucks buying it back home, so didn't do that. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, I may do a little more vlog content from here. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking about... Not, it won't be knife related, but, you know, I rented a fairly cool car, so maybe I'll talk about that. And, and I'll definitely do something around Portugal. 
just to show you guys Lisbon, Portugal, and show you what that's like, kind of like I did uh, with Kokum the other day. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. I'm very much enjoying being uh, back in Europe. This is one of my favorite places, but uh, it'll be nice to get home too. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.